is a pastor at San Antonio's University Presbyterian Church, but he grew up in South Africa. And he is actually there on a visit at a very interesting time to be in that country. Pastor Andres Kotsea joins us now live from South Africa. Thank you so much for staying up late for us uh, to take part in this conversation. South Africa, obviously, I know that you've been there a few days now, but it has kind of become the focus of this Omicron variant to COVID-19. What is it like being there, uh, kind of in the midst of all this attention that's focused on uh, you know, the country where you grew up? Well, thank you, Steve and Stefania. It's uh, great to join you. And it's so uh, nice to on a vacation. I've been here actually a couple of weeks now. Um, it's so nice to join with my hometown uh, in San Antonio, Texas. And it's to, to kind of give you a, a, a glimpse of what it is, is that it's great to talk from South Africa to San Antonio, um, the, my place of birth and now my home city, San Antonio. So it shows you and us that we are all global citizens. And really, that is what it feels like to be in South Africa right now. Um, we've had a great time. And actually, we, we traveled through the area where they, this, where they um, f discovered this uh, variant. Uh, but um, I think people are mostly meeting this travel ban against South Africans uh, with shock and the disappointment. And also very much at the heart of it, I think many South Africans feel that this is a distraction from the real issue at hand. And the real issue at hand is the global inequity of access and distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine. So I think for people in a develop, developing country like South Africa, it's important that uh, we um, get, uh, stay focused on, on what is at hand. South Africans actually are doing a great job in um, doing the basics right when it comes to COVID-19. Uh, my wife, Beth, and I have, as I said, traveled in the country now for several weeks. You cannot go into a store or a restaurant where you are met with a person sanitizing your hands. There's a national mask mandate in place, and you cannot go anywhere without a mask. And also contact tracing is big. I mean, each restaurant we've gone into, you've got to give your contact information so that people can do contact tracing in case there's an outbreak of COVID. So um, people are doing what they can and uh, the best they can to adhere to COVID, basic COVID-19 um, protocol. But the issue at hand is, as I said, uh, inequity in access and distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine. And South Africa was late to get to um, be getting people to be vaccinated, as uh, are many of our neighboring countries, uh, because really the ban is against Southern African countries. Um, so um, I think the plea is for us to stay focused on, on the global inequity of access and distribution. I'm glad that you that you brought up that point because a lot of people in South Africa haven't been able to get the vaccine just yet. And that may be why there, you also see some overcompensation when it comes to some of these other measures, right? Like just the sterilization and all of these things because not as many people do have the vaccine. But I do want to ask you something. Um, so as far as this variant is concerned, what people have said is that they see very mild symptoms. Have you heard anything or have you heard of anybody who's been affected by this particular variant? and how and you know, what's happened to them? Yeah, no, I'm fortunate that my um, sister is actually an uh, epidemiologist. She's a, um, uh, she was an infectious um, disease specialist for a hospital, and now she's working on a global project in Africa. And from uh, what her colleagues can tell, and also you can follow the expert here on Twitter, Stephania, they very much confirm exactly what you are saying. And therefore, I think it is important that uh, we stay calm and that we follow and do the basic things they ask us to do to get um, um, vaccinated, to wear a mask, and to uh, disinfect our hands. The South African president, Cyril Ramaphosa, also made a plea um, to developing countries, as he uh, rightly pointed out that um, actually the travel ban against South Africa is a breach of uh, a G20 agreement that they made in Rome last month, that as global citizens, we will work together in um, fighting uh, the COVID-19. And, um, and really, that's, that is a very important point as well, is that we are global citizens. And it shows that 
that um, we all need to work, all countries need to work together uh, th to uh, manage this back, uh, the, the COVID-19. Yeah, sorry to, to interrupt you there, Dries, but Please. do you think that South Africa is getting a bum rap in all of this? Because it, it, they were thought to be the first country to detect it. It doesn't mean that it necessarily started in South Africa, as we had an epidemiologist point out to us yesterday on this very program. They really kind of be, are almost being punished for being the first to discover this new variant is kind of how some people are seeing it. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. So uh, they are pointing that out in South Africa. And uh, South Africa is taking great pride in their scientists and the scientists who, uh, who detected this uh, strain. And... Um, and they are feel they're getting punished, and this is very, uh, it's actually very dangerous in the in the um, as global uh, uh, as a, as global citizens and as as uh, for, for a country to detect this new variant and then being punished for detecting it. So the question is, if if countries do detect new variants, uh, do we want them to report that so that we all can work together? or will they be afraid to report it because they're afraid they will be punished like South what's happening to South Africans right now? Yeah, and I just want to mention that the, the researchers uh, in, um, in the Netherlands found that actually the variant was detected there before it was detected in, in South Africa, just that the researchers, the scientists in South Africa seem to have really been on it. And I also wanted to talk about the, you, you talked about the vaccination rate, I believe here, 60% uh, of adults are fully vaccinated and in South Africa, it's something like 25 percent or something like well, that. They, and That's you just correct. don't have the vaccines there, correct, Reese? Really quick, we got about you, 20 seconds. You know, the vaccines got here very late, but it seems to me they've been catching up. And that's that's why it's very important. Um, I think why India and South Africa is really pleading to the global community to drop some of these patent laws on the vaccine so that they, it can become more and readily available in developing countries, just like it happened with um, HIV um, uh, 40 years ago when it was discovered covered, but um, uh, and, and 20 years ago, actually this year, big pharmaceutical companies dropped uh, um, uh, the, the lawsuit against Nelson Mandela's um, um, uh, uh, government uh, because they wanted to make, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, antiretroviral drugs more readily available yeah. by dropping the patent laws. And, and tomorrow is World AIDS Day, so it's important that we put COVID-19 in that perspective, too, of the other global pandemic that we're still fighting. All right, Pastor Kutsia, we're going to have to leave it right there, but we're so happy that we had a chance to speak with you. We want you to stay safe and healthy, and we want to see you back, back here in San Antonio. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Steve. It was an honor to be with you and the citizens of San Antonio. Great to see you. We'll be right back.